When I first started full-time on the road, I thought that I could just go into some camping app and choose a boondocking spot and drive out there and everything was going to be just perfect. You find out that that is not the way it goes. More often than not, you have to hustle a little bit and look around, and sometimes the spot that you thought you were going to does not work out at all. It's 5 o'clock at night, the sun is starting to go down, and you don't have a backup. So, today, as promised, I'm going to show you how I took all of the resources from Sunday's video, and I'm going to integrate them to show you how I plan a route on my phone. So when I'm going from one place to another, I know that no matter what happens, I'm going to be just fine on my route. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV. Sorry if the camera's a little jiggly, it's windy out today, so my RV is shaken. But you might have seen Sunday that I did a COVID camping 10 tips to plan your trip video where I gave you a bunch of resources for camping. The links for all of that are on my blog at creativityrv.com. But you might wonder how to put all that together, so I'm gonna show you what I actually do every time I travel on my phone. I have an Android phone. Of course, if you have an Apple product, you're going to be a little bit different than me, but you should be able to use just what I'm doing here. Okay, here are my camping apps. This is actually what I use. You can see I have highway weather. That tells me what the weather's going to be like en route on my trip, so if I need to adjust because of weather, I can easily. RV Parky is my favorite app. I'll show you why in a second. Harvest House. You guys know I'm a big believer in Harvest House. 79 bucks a year. You get access to a bunch of farms and wineries and museums you can stay at overnight for free. Of course, you want to go in and support the business. Freecampsites.net, a lot of people use. I use it a little bit differently. I'll show you how. See right here where this one says RV Parks Caravan Parking, but it doesn't look like an app. It's got a little Google icon. That's because this is Campendium. To my knowledge, Campendium does not have an app per se for Android. So what I do is if I find a website I like, like I have here, up in the upper right hand corner, you hit those three dots and you say add to home screen and you add it and it creates a little icon just like that. And then I put the icon in this folder and it makes like a searchable app for me. I did the same thing with Casino Camper. This is Reserve America Camping, Trucker Path. I'll show you guys that in a second. National Parks, the US Public Lands app. Same thing with the National Forest for searchable spots and BLM. I created apps for that in here. Um, same with National Parks, Google Earth, Coverage Question Mark, Mountain Directory, Dump Stations, All Stays. So those are my go-to apps. Now I'm going to go ahead and build out all of the potential stops on a map. I don't actually usually do this. I'm just doing it to show you guys how you can do it. I usually do look though and know in my head what's coming up every four hours or so. So here is Salt Lake City, Two Sisters. And by the way, if you guys are wondering what all these blue dots are, in Google Maps, you can turn on something called My Trip So Far. And I have to say, I did it the first like year I was on the road. These are all places I stopped. And I stopped doing it. Anyway, you can see the blue line here that goes from Salt Lake to Oregon. If you go the fastest way, it's 10 hours and 27 minutes. Of course, you can choose the slow way. You can also go up and say route options and avoid the highways. But if you avoid highways, you don't have as much access to say rest areas, truck stops, Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, places like that. So if you're wanting to get somewhere and just stop overnight to rest in your route, then um, doing the highways is probably a better thing. I'm going to go ahead and choose the route that takes about 10 and a half hours. Now, I like to drive about four hour stretches. Um, and sometimes I get to a place and I love it so much I stay before I move on. But in my case, I probably would get to about, let's say, Twin Falls. So I'm going to go out of Google and go to one of my other apps to find places around Twin Falls. The first app I go to every time is Highway Weather. I've told you guys about this one before, but it helps me decide when to leave because weather can change really rapidly. So you can see I have Salt Lake City to Sisters here. You say search. You can ask it if you leave now, what the weather's going to be, and also if you leave in a few days. For me, I'm always looking for wind. So that's the same route I have now, right? The good thing about this app is that, let's say you drive a few hours, you stop and recheck it. I do it every time because it will update the map 
and then you know I need to stay here for another day or I need to drive another two hours because I'm going to miss this storm if I do that. So highway weather is my go-to number one first thing. Now I'm going to go into RV Parky, which is my personal favorite go-to app. I'm going to show you why. Let's put in Twin Falls here. It's going to show a bunch of different options based on your filters. Now my filters are not going to have RV parks normally, but you can put them in there. Oh, see, this is why I use RV Parky. Because look at these danger signs, right? I know that when I go through Twin Falls, I don't want to take this road. Because my RV is 13 feet, 11 inches high, and I would rip the top off right here. We know that we're going to have a Walmart that allows overnight parking, but always call. A Loves. Loves usually has RV overnight parking, but call. Um, a Pilot. So that might be good also. And a rest area. So now you see that when I leave Salt Lake City, I have a place to stop right there in Twin Falls. I can do the same thing with the rest area or an RV park or a truck stop, something like that. I'm going to say done. And now you can see I would be able to get to that Walmart in three hours. So if you're getting tired and you're driving, you know that you have a place to go in three hours. So I'm going to go back to my apps here and pop down to Trucker Path. Because remember, we had all those options there, the rest areas, lots of truck stops. Here it is, Twin Falls, Idaho. This is what's great about Trucker Path and how it helps us be good citizens with the truckers on the road. You can see here in Twin Falls, there is a Flying J and there's a Valley Country Store. See right here where it says drivers are reporting there are some spaces 13 hours ago? Literally, it gives you up-to-date information. If you go to the other one, there's some spaces. Sometimes it will say many, sometimes it will say none. Now, if you actually click on this, it's going to tell you that this little country store only has 18 spaces. It does allow overnight parking. It has Wi-Fi, right? But let's look at the other one. It also tells you the gas prices, by the way, so you don't need to, like, have Gas Buddy or another app. Okay, this Flying J has 80 spaces. Overnight parking, showers, ATM. It will tell you if these spaces have laundry. Some of them have hundreds of parking spaces. So, obviously, if there's 80 spaces and it says it's almost full and there's one five miles down the road that has 120 spaces, and there's tons of spots, you obviously want to head towards the one that's empty so that you can leave spaces for the truckers. Go over to freecampsites.net. You put in Twin Falls. Now, my settings are for pay and free campgrounds. The pay are red, the free are green. Okay, this one's interesting. Look, it's right off the highway. Bell Rapid Sportsman Access. So what I look at here is cell signal and look at the great pictures of the road. Yes, good road. Okay. Yep. And people give the length of their vehicle. So if you have a bigger rig like me, you can see if it will fit here. So look at all of these options on freecampsites.net. This is a good resource. There are are usually places right off the highway, but keep in mind, when you go to boondock at free places, the closer you are to a town, the more likely you are to see things like bullets, graffiti, broken glass. I try to avoid those places. So if you roll in and you see some of that stuff, you know you have other options because you've got these other campsites and you also have some of the overnight parking. I went ahead and added that free campsite to our route, and now I'm going to look around Mountain Home, which is up the route a little bit and I'm going to do that in Campendium. Now, one thing I really like Campendium for is they have great dump station information. I find that it's better than like the Sani Dumps app. So if you go into the filters, you can make sure that they're giving you information on the dump stations. Here we are in our searching Campendium around Mountain Home. Look, these are dump stations, right? So I will add that to my route if I need to. And let's see here, state parks, free camping and paid camping. And look at all of the national forest camping up here. A lot of this is completely free. Oh, look, let's look at that one. Arrow Rock Reserve dispersed camping. Look at that. See, just doing this with you guys makes me want to go see all these places. This is free. This is free, but you know what? It's a little bit off my route, so I probably won't go to that one, but if you wanted to, you could add it to your route. 
And then you know up in town here, you have other services. Okay, this one's a little bit more my speed. There's the main highway. Bell Rapids, Sportsman's Access. Let's take a look at that. Look how pretty that is. It's totally free. Somebody was there in a 48-foot trailer. And, okay, cell signal. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to our map. So, so far, after we left Salt Lake, within four hours, basically, we have three places to stay. Okay, further up on my route, near Ontario, there was a lot of rest areas, truck stops, Walmarts. But you know what? By that point in my trip, I probably want to stay somewhere natural, maybe for a little bit longer. So I went into freecampsites.net, and I found, just off of Highway 84, the Bully Creek Reservoir. You're going to see that some people left some reviews here. I mean, gosh, look at those pictures. Great. But maybe I don't want to go where everybody else goes. Freecampsites.net is great, but then everybody who searches in that area thinks these are the only spots. What I do to look at the roads and to look at other spots is I'll take this review. I'm going to go over into Google Earth and put in the GPS for that location that they were talking about. Now, this is perfect. See all these roads? That is probably all camping. We're going to check on another app in a second. But let's look. So what you want to look for when you're finding dispersed camping is you can't stay on the road itself, right? And these roads look great. What you want to do is you want to find like a little vein that goes off of that, like right here. You want to find a little vein that goes off the road, right? Oh, look, there's a camper. So... I don't have to be just in the spot that somebody else talked about, which was over here. I can be over here, right? But I want to make sure that that's not somebody's property. So then I go back out of there and I go to the U.S. Public Lands app. I think it's seven bucks. They have it for Android and iOS. Okay, it's going to zoom in. And, you know, really quick before we look at that one spot, this is why I like this app. And for everyone that thinks there's not enough camping on public land for everybody, look at this. This is all public land. A lot of this is available for camping. Not as much on the East Coast, but on the West Coast there is. And in this app, they color code it. So you can see BLM, National Forest, all that, right? Okay, but let's look at our spot. So this is BLM land. Let's switch to satellite. You can see that that is all on BLM land, so I know I'm safe. Now, let's say you see you're on public land. You see some good roads you want to check out. It's close to the services you need, but you need a cell signal, and you don't know. I go into coverage question mark. The cool thing about this app is you can choose your carrier. So here's Verizon. Any place that you see red, if you have Verizon, should be good. You know, if you're in the mountains, just remember it's not always totally accurate because Something could be blocking the signal, but there's Verizon. Let's say you want to see AT&T. You can see how much AT&T there is. So if I'm going to be staying at a spot for a longer period of time and I want to make sure that I'm going to have a signal there, I use coverage question mark. So now you guys can see on our map between Salt Lake and about six hours out of driving we have one two three four locations we could have added a lot more so you guys get the idea you take your own camping style into account do you like state parks do you like pay campgrounds do you like rv parks do you want to go totally boondocking all the way you can find dump stations water the prices of things and have three or four backups in that geography that you know if one doesn't work out another one will you don't have to worry that when you get out to your spot, if it's not level, it's a little sketchy, um, or the road is washed out, or the weather has changed, that you won't have a place to go. You just have to be able to integrate all this stuff. But boy, don't you want to go camping now? But you can take it fast, you can take it slow, it's completely up to you. I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, the links for all of these resources are actually in my blog post at creativityrv.com, including all of the apps. I hope to see you all out on the road soon or just doing something that you love. Until then, 
Everybody have happy travels and be free. Thank you.